How much time needs to pass before grave robbing turns into archaeology? There's also a methodology component to it. Regardless of the age of the remains, if I womble up with a metal detector, dig a hole and yoink out anything of value, that's grave robbing. If I fight for months for planning approval, record every detail of the site in obsessive detail, then refill any holes carefully when the funding has run out even though there's still more to discover, that's archaeology. Plus archaeology's not just graves. This is the only proper answer here, and typical of Reddit it's way below. Grave robbing slash vandalism slash etc is merely that, repossession of discovered content for reasons such as sale, intentional desecration, etc. Archaeology involves scientific effort, certain standards of methodology, transparency, and everything else that's part of archivising a location of interest. Edit, okay guys, I get it, it's upvoted decently now. As an archaeologist, I was working on a prehistoric American Indian site not far from where I live that was used as a sort of continuous active site for students at a nearby college. One summer, all the students were assigned different features in the excavation unit. One of the features, a splotch of darker soil, looked really strange. Didn't really resemble any expected shape. Turns out to be a ditch some grave robbers dug filled with old Gatorade bottles and shotgun shells. The ditch ran between two other features, missing them both by mere inches. Both of them were burials. Not too sure if this sounds like grave robbing or several guys trying to hide their shells after shooting Gatorade bottles and inadvertently stumbling upon something. You might be right, but the school has been excavating that site for a few years. Word gets around and apparently people from the town and ask all kinds of really in-depth questions about locations. I guess it's been robbed before, too. Same, my university has a similar site too. My brother who likes to metal detect and doesn't comply with national park laws, because he is POS, wanted to know where my arch class was digging. Yeah not a snowball's chance in hell I would ever tell him where it is. Besides, the only thing he'd pick up with that would be square head nails from a house that was built there in the 1830s. But it's all about context. The other college in our town had dug there in the 1970s and some guy was pretty good with working glass. So he fucking left behind glass worked into the shapes of arrowheads. Pure tampering with the site. It's a lot more than methodology, it's also, as you allude to, motivation and intent. Grave robbers just want to take stuff for themselves, archaeologists in theory, anyway are there to learn something about the culture that produced whatever artifacts are being examined. Edit, there are still people commenting to remind me that archaeology has a rich history of colonialism, which can make it morally equivalent to, or perhaps worse than, grave robbing. You're not wrong, but I'll point out that this isn't inherent to the field, though it has historically been deeply connected to it. In Canada you can't rebury and walk off, you have to notify authorities. You will get in deep, deep shit for reburying remains without telling anyone, and in the case of indigenous sites we are legally obligated to notify the affiliated band office so that the remains can be reinterred with proper rights. It also varies from province to province because of the differences in license structure slash requirements. Here we have First Nations monitors on most of the digs I've worked on as well. What constitutes grave robbing depends on who's being asked. European graves, generally no one cares if there's no one maintaining them. First Nations on the other hand, care a lot for obvious reasons. The law says that if it's 50 years or younger and the grave isn't marked, it's potentially a crime scene. Regardless, if we find unexpected remains we call the cops, which grave robbers don't do. If we have been hired to dig up graves, the cops already know we're there. Edit to add, unlike Poth hunters, we also don't keep or sell things we find. If you're in the United States and find a grave, there is no period of time elapsed when it becomes legal to dig it up and loot the remains. Grave sites are legally protected. If it's a Native American burial you'd be breaking federal law. You can dig up a grave if you have a reason to, but you most definitely require a permit to do so, and in order to get one you'll likely need an archaeologist or medical examiner, depending on the age of the burial, running the show. The difference between an archaeological site and a modern site is different where you are and depends on local state laws. In Florida I know it used to be 75 years, but it's possible that's changed. I used to be an archaeologist. 
I have a degree in the field and worked in it, primarily in the southeastern USA for about 10 years. The vast majority of archaeology undertaken is developer-led, meaning the site is only being dug because it's going to be developed for housing slash industry slash quarrying etc. The site is essentially going to be trashed. There is no possibility of putting things back because the site will be built on and the ground irretrievably altered by heavy machinery. Full archaeological excavation is generally seen as a last resort where preservation in situ isn't possible. The idea of excavation for excavation's sake is a bit old-fashioned these days and most reputable archaeologists would agree that it's better to leave things in the ground as they are rather than disturb them for no reason.